Would you like to support Monkey Works directly? Head over to patreon.com forward slash monkeyworksus. You'll be greeted with four membership levels. Starting at the first tier is Spider Monkey. This tier is $3 per month, gaining Discord benefits, exclusive access to ad-free content, live sit reps, Q&As, and video archives. If that's not enough, step up to the next level of Howler Monkey. For just $5 a month, you'll not only have Spider Monkey's benefits, but you'll get exclusive discounts to the workshop plus voting voice on new products. Next up is Space Monkey. At $10 per month, this is the ultimate level of Overwatch. At this altitude, you'll gain access to no ad content, full archive, voting power, workshop discounts, and monthly AMAs where you can ask Monkey anything. Lastly, for the Monkey Work Superfan, you can become the Banana Knot. You'll get all the benefits of Space Monkey plus an exclusive Monkey Works item every month you are subscribed that you can't buy in the workshop. Head over to patreon.com forward slash monkeyworksus to begin your membership and be a part of a God-loving patriotic community. All right. Welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. Listen, it's going to be your sit rep. It is around 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas, and it is our Friday live show. So welcome to those that are uh, new, just checking us out. Uh, we love to have you. And uh, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notification as we get into this. Now, got some interesting stuff going on here around the world, uh, especially here in the U.S. Uh, it seems that uh, we've got some visitors from China hanging out over our heads we're going to get into that uh, here in just a minute. So without further ado, let me get us over here to the mini board, uh, a.k.a. mini me, down here in the corner. And uh, we're going to kick it off here with Skyglass. Now, if you don't have Skyglass, I will tell you the best flight tracking app on the planet. Uh, this thing is absolutely amazing. And um, I this is going to change the way we look at stuff, no doubt about it. So... All right, let's take a look at what we got in terms of numbers. Uh, sitting currently up at around 381 at last check. That's just on screen, military aircraft only. Now, if we cross out the Text 2s, which are trainers, and we uh, toss out the T-38s, which are also trainers, uh, that brings our number to 281. So that's, uh, that's still higher than average. We're sitting at about 40, uh, 40 higher than average. You add back in the Text 2s and... Yeah, we're 140 over. So anyway, let's um, let's kind of break it down to what we've got going on out here. Um, we're going to look at, we'll kick it off actually with uh, with our watch list. Now, the watch list are aircraft that I uh, basically tag, uh, and it is based, it's created solely on my stuff. Uh, if you have Skyglass, you create your own watch list, or you can import mine. Um, but uh, this is stuff that uh, we look at. Uh, on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to pause it for one second. These that I'm showing that are super high up, uh, those are U.S. balloons, all right? And so um, they are all over the place. There's some that we don't actually see right now, uh, but there are a lot of them. Uh, it's important to understand that because as we talk about the Chinese spy balloons coming across the United States, just remember that the U.S. intelligence community has balloons over our heads 24-7, always there. Uh, they've got them down on the panhandle, so if you're in Alabama, you may even see one. But I will tell you, they're at like eighty or 90,000 feet, which is pretty high. That's above commercial aviation. It's above everything, really. Um, and so let me go ahead and continue on with this. But I wanted to point that out, uh, and uh, you'll see me kind of tag them here as we, as we talk. That and these, all right, way up over our heads. Uh, gathering data on you and me 24-7. So as we talk about the Chinese coming inbound, um, they're just basically encroaching upon our own intelligence stuff that's already digging over our heads. So, all right, got some stuff going on, Homeland Security and some intel birds. Uh, that's Southern California and the southern side of uh, Arizona there, south of Tucson. Got a little PC-12. That's going to be one of your little recon birds gathering data. Uh, E-6, out over the Gulf. Takamo, those are uh, take charge, move out Navy birds, and uh, they are talking to our subs and our nukes. So there's Lasai. Uh, keep in mind, Lasai Aviation. That's a civilian DoD contracted bird that is basically recon. It's it's doing spy work uh, uh, for our DoD. So 
it's amazing at how much stuff. I'm going to have to maneuver my my mouse here for a second just to get a better uh, approach angle on what we're looking at. So just bear with me. Notice there is an R-135 that has disappeared up north over the Dakotas. Could be headed up looking for uh, this other spy bird. And um, those E-6s are just getting airborne, uh, as well as two E-3 sentries. Those are going to be airborne uh, air traffic control in a nutshell. Okay. Notice the C-135 and the two R-135s plus this one. Uh, that's going to be four 135s that are up, not KCs, but Cs and Rs. Those are recon. Again, more reconnaissance uh, aircraft that are up. And uh, let's go over to Europe. Give it a second. There we go. As we head over to Europe, we'll take a closer look. We do have an E3 that uh, looks to be kind of headed down towards Turkey. And uh, hard to see on my screen from here who who owns that one. But uh, let me back up and see. Um, looks like Luxembourg. Who knew they had E3s? But notice this one. This is an R-135. It is over uh, Constanta. And I notice that is this, this E3 that actually kind of encroached the airspace there where that R-135 was. Uh, but it's over Constanta doing man in the middle. All right. Um, it's also important to note that these German Air Force, the GAFT, those are, those are also balloons. All right. And so Germany and the U.S. are the only two places I see it. Coincidence? Probably not that these guys have the same technologies that we are both working on. So, yeah, and that's gathering. I tell you, those balloons are gathering data all over the place, all over Europe. Uh, the one that's uh, up over the middle of the United States is coast to coast. That thing is that's uh, capability at that altitude is insane uh, as to you know what they can gather. So, all right, let's talk heavies for a minute, then we'll get back into the balloons. All right, uh, you can see. Got some activity going on, shooting out of the West Coast down in Southern California. Little C-130, it's going to be your short haul birds. And then uh, C-17, C-130s all over, just East Coast centric right now. Very, very active for a Friday. And uh, they are moving a lot of stuff. Now, keep in mind, when you see the things right there in South Carolina, uh, that is going to be uh, stuff we're moving down, putting into the port uh, as it floats across the drink there over to, as we make our way to Ukraine. So, all right, take a look at Europe here too. Uh, but yeah, a little more active today, at least in the U.S. Europe is not quite as active, but it is kind of scattered. Uh, got stuff out over Constanta again. And then uh, notice we got stuff up in Norway, moving around there, uh, delivering some stuff to them. And um, the what, who knows? Notice we got a lot of uh, traffic there. C-17s coming inbound to the to uh, uh, the uh, Ramstein area. Uh, stuff moving down into Monaco, or sorry, Morocco, not Monaco. Yeah, um, and that's Belgium Air Force. Twice now we've caught them uh, headed down, and then that's Germany headed down into southern Africa. Yeah, there you go. All right, A-400s. Uh, which is kind of a different aircraft. The U.S. doesn't fly those, by the way. Uh, they have turboprops. They look like our old C-141s with kind of a, a hybrid of a C-130. So, all right. And then we had some stuff going into uh, look like uh, Cutter. Okay, let's go down here. Air refuelers. Now, this is where it starts to get busy. Now, we are going to start off here in Europe. Just notice, again, a lot of activity going on over Constanta. That uh, is kind of a data point for you. Uh, clearly, air refuelers up. You get them. Uh, they're going to be servicing the R-135s. They're going to be servicing that, even the AWACS, and uh, and probably uh, some fighters. Okay. All right. I get over here to the U.S. and we are kind of heavy today in terms of air refuelers. I'm counting 43 of these bad mama jammers up. And uh, notice we got them out over the water, over the uh, Pacific side of the house. Don't see that too often. Not this time of day. Um, but, uh, this is, uh, yeah, the latest right there, kind of headed in between, uh, Oregon and California. And then, uh, we head over, we've got some activity there in Southern Arizona, which is also, um, uh, and I wouldn't say it's new, but 
you know, right there supporting the border, probably fighters up over in that area. And then a chalk, just a boatload of them coming out of the center of the United States, uh, headed in all different directions. Uh, it looks like they're just getting airborne up in Adam. So uh, some activity over kind of the panhandle over Tampa uh, and Florida. And then, of course, up on the East Coast as we got flashbang on the move today. Uh, later on, and uh, that's going to be we've got fighter activity. Now, remember, indicators uh, uh, when you have that many air refuelers up, it's a pretty good indicator that we have um, a lot of fighters up too, okay? All right, now, uh, this is going to be your R-135s. These are reconnaissance birds, little activity there over southern Nevada, and then our usual stuff. Notice we got some coming home. Uh, both sides, actually, coming in from Hawaii, it looks like one bounced across the drink and then one headed inbound from Europe just on a rotation. That's all that is. Um, yeah, just a little active over the over the center of the United States. Not uncommon. This is kind of their their swim lane there where they they do a lot of work. Uh, just, you know, regular flights there. OK, now this one is interesting because, remember, uh, Kaliningrad, that is Russia, and we are completely flying <laughs> Circles around that whole area, taking a look at what's on the ground. We're also looking very closely at Belarus, according to what the flight traces indicate. Uh, and then notice, too, we're still out over the Persian Gulf, southern side of Iran, uh, and uh, up into kind of Syria as we look at uh, the battlefield there. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Syria here in a minute because um, we've had some recent activity going on there. So. All right, now we back, uh, let's see, one more look at the R-135s. Notice that one disappears. I have a feeling that's the one that we saw bounce into Hawaii from there and then on into the United States. Um, but it just goes to show you we've got, uh, got R-135 activity going on out there in China. So, all right, it's going to be our drones. And uh, this one we're looking at right here is a Q4 drone. And uh, it is off the eastern seaboard and getting busy. Super high-tech stuff there, folks. It is looking at all kinds of things. Guaranteed, they are worried about something off the East Coast. Then on top of this, we've got a couple movements here. It looks like between, eh, it's really hard to tell from here, but uh, one of them Chicago, or not Chicago, but Illinois, Southern Illinois, it looks like. Those are probably Q9 drones. Same thing with that one. Right along the border there, just south of Winnipeg. Looks to be a Q9 drone. So, again, those are spy birds, right, or recon birds. Um, and then same here. Uh, this is uh, another Q9 drone. Now, these are going to be Customs and Border Patrol more than likely. And uh, notice it headed right down there to the border side. And it looks like they parked it down there. So uh, we'll continue to watch that activity. Then we get over to Europe here in just a second. But um, the Q9 Reaper uh, outfitted uh, in a war platform actually uh, can carry some weaponry, but uh, it doesn't over the United States. It's more than likely Customs and Border Patrol. And then we've got that little one there just to the north of Tripoli getting eyes on um, very active, very active. So that has been uh, the case here lately. So let's get into the intelligence side, and, we'll, and I'll show you a little bit more uh, of the uh, – uh, this is kind of a blend of civilian intel and DOD intel. Notice we're looking at Hungary, looking at uh, Bulgaria, uh, and then notice the routes we're running to the left side of Moldova, out over Constanta, and then uh, kind of tucked in underneath the, uh, the western side of Ukraine. And then up here, we're also running uh, in and out of Lithuania, which is interesting. And... Uh, up along the Baltic Sea, looks like we're looking at some some traffic there as well. Probably Russian uh, ships, if I had to guess. Uh, we get over here to Japan and see if we've got any of uh, our normal stuff here. Looking a little empty. Yeah, so, and then over the United States. Now, uh, the stuff over West Virginia and Virginia, that is going to be uh, the civilian intel. That's LaSai Aviation. Uh, and they are basically DOD contract uh, recon uh, spying on somebody. And then this stuff you see here, this is really primarily going to be the mill intel aircraft flying in and out of Tucson. We've got a big intelligence community base right there south of Tucson, right along the, the, uh, the border there. Um, 
And so that's what you're looking at here. These are military intelligence aircraft kind of bubbling into the general area. Up to Colorado, over Nevada, um, and over uh, New Mexico. Now, this one... This is going to be one of those Lasai birds. Actually, we caught it going down to Central America. It looks like it's a XPL Honduras area. Uh, running some uh, routes there across Honduras, probably looking at the late the, or the next wave of uh, migrants, if I had to guess. All right. Okay, we've covered that. Let's get into the meat of what we're going to talk about today, which is going to be this Chinese spy balloon. Very interesting. Um, this is actually going to be the war zone, a.k.a. the drive. China's spy balloon over Montana is part of a larger, more troubling pattern. Uh, the U.S. is saying that this happens from time to time. This isn't the first time this has happened, although it's the first time we're probably hearing about it happening. Uh, here's a shot of it. I'll give you a closer shot here shortly. Uh, but they are kind of perplexed because they can't shoot it down. The reason being is this thing is the size of three school buses. So uh, that is a very large, uh, that's a pretty big spy balloon. Uh, and uh, it is not, it doesn't appear to be at the altitude that our, our stuff is, right? So it's not above commercial aviation. In fact, at about 19,000 feet, it is uh, kind of in, in between that general aviation and the military um, airspace, all right? There, there are layers, kind of like a cake, when you think about air traffic control, um, and so when you get uh, from 20 to about 26,000 to maybe a little about maybe 28,000 feet in that range is going to be your military aircraft. 16,000 and below are going to be pretty much general aviation. So when I say general aviation, I'm talking about Cessnas and uh, Helos and things like that. OK, um, but uh, the military kind of has that air, airspace bubble. Uh, in fact, they do most of their air refueling around 25 to 26,000 feet. Um, because that's kind of the smoothest area for them to operate. Then if you get above that, up to about eh, thirty-eight to 40,000 feet is commercial aviation. So from about 28 up to about, uh, say, 40,000 feet, that's going to be your commercial stuff. So that's all of your you know, airlines and things like that. And then if you get above 40, that's, that kind of gets into – you know, some of the bigger military uh, uh, aviation stuff like B-52s and B-2s, et cetera, uh, the high flyers. And then you kind of get into the mill intel stuff like the balloons. Our U.S. balloons are around eighty to 90,000 feet up. The German ones are around 62,000 feet, well above any commercial aviation traffic. Now, this Chinese balloon is looks to be, now just based on these, these um uh, the KC-135 air refuelers that were looking at it yesterday. Let me pull those up, and you can see the traffic as they were kind of flying around this thing. We had three um, uh, KC-135. These are air refuelers. Um, the, below their kind of normal traffic range, they were at about 19,000 feet, which would indicate that those balloons are kind of uh, in that, that general space, around 20,000 feet, 19,000, 20,000 feet in range. So there's, and I say balloons because we do have confirmation that there, there are more than one uh, inbound to the United States. So this is the first one, and that is over Montana. Um, and so to think about this, you can't just shoot it down because then you got something the size of three school buses hitting the ground that could kill civilians or anything else that's on the ground below. So that's why they won't do it. Also, if you were to fire a few rounds out of, a, say, a fighter jet, um, those things will eventually come down <laughs> gravity-wise, and God knows where uh, the range on those would be. So uh, that's the other issue, too. If you, if you blow this thing up uh, it, uh, with using, say, um, you know, a fighter just doing a few squeezes on the trigger uh, without shooting a missile at it, um, I don't know that you'd need a missile to take it down a balloon, right? But you know, one little round of, uh, of F-35, uh, you know, uh, guns, and that bad dude is, uh, you know, you're going to be peppering people down below. So it presents a unique in, uh, issue for the Pentagon. The other piece, too, is they don't really know what's on this. Uh, there could be stuff that uh, could hit the ground and end up exploding, or uh, there could be stuff on it that has, you know, uh, you know, anything, bioweapons, any, any kind of stuff. So... Uh, in the meantime, what they do is they fly around and just jam it up. So 
Um, they say that they are basically just jamming it as it comes across the United States so they can't use it and utilize it. Um, but let's uh, let's take a closer look. This is the interesting thing. Now, this is OS in, uh, in Defender, which basically means Open Source Intelligence Defender. Um, so I should have said OSINT, really. Um, anyway, this is just a data point for you. This came out. Uh, it says, it's being reported that the Canadian Department of National Defense may be tracking a second Chinese high-altitude surveillance balloon. And then down below, uh, OS uh, in, uh, Intelligence basically says, NORAD and Canadian DoD have confirmed that a second balloon is currently being tracked somewhere over Canada. So it uh, has not entered U.S. airspace yet, but it is inbound uh, into our area. Okay. Okay. Now, the other piece, too, this, this kind of gives you a general idea of what this thing looks like. Uh, you can see it's a better, more clear picture than, than what I was showing over on the drive. But um, it's massive. Uh, you can see it's got a lot of uh, panels on it and a lot of equipment on it. And uh, it's an interesting-looking balloon. Um, so... Anyway, that just gives you kind of eyes on it, all right? So let me see here. I know I made it. Let me just double check here through my, uh, because I had more uh, insight into that. So, okay, yeah, let's do this. This is actually going to go, I'm going to bounce over to this side. Uh, this is uh, coming from the Chinese government, basically stating that they are investigating the United States reports that a Chinese high-altitude surveillance balloon violated both Canadian and U.S. airspace. The game, <laughs> the games that we play. And then here, this is basically NORAD confirming that, yes, indeed, there is a Chinese balloon over the United States. That was from yesterday. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, all right. Let's get back over to the mini side of the house. Um, and uh, again, Chinese balloon uh, information. Now, this is what I find interesting. So we get over here to Flashbang uh, today. Uh, this is uh, February 3rd. And he gets his daily briefing uh, at, at uh, 0830 hours. And then we get on down. Um, he's re, re, you know delivering remarks on the jobs report for January. And let's see, headed to Joint Base Andrews, en route to Philadelphia. That's at 1.20 p.m. We'll look at that here in just a second. And then uh, he arrives in Philly. And then he delivers remarks uh, on the progress the country has made and the work implementing the Biden and Harris economic agenda that continues to deliver results for the American people. Yeah, I know we can feel the results, right? Uh, yeah. Anyway, so it looks like he just uh, does his regular stuff. He's doing some gripping and grinning and then heads to uh, Delaware. And uh, let's, matter of fact, let's just take a look at the, the TFRs that are out there right now. Um, we're going to first pop in over the Wyoming, Wyoming side, special weather statement, uh, nothing nothing to see here, uh, nothing relative to balloons. Now, uh, remember, it's uh, I think it was over Billings, Montana kind of area, last seen. So it's headed uh, en route over, I guess, the Dakotas next uh, as it'll be coming across the United States very slowly. All right. Uh, what you see here uh, going across uh, the map, these are power outages. So if you're looking at the color boxes, wondering what those are, had a lot of ice storms over the last four days this week. We are starting to thaw out here in Texas, but they are headed across Arkansas and, and the like. So they are getting this sloppy mess now. Um, but yeah, this is a, a pretty major ice event going across. So these are people without power. Now we get over to the TFRs. We've got a looks to down here, uh, looks to be a uh, space operations TFR off of Cape Canaveral. And um, again, more slop coming off the East Coast. Seems to be a regular occurrence here lately. And we get in a little closer. And uh, you can see this is going to be your senior living center, brown zone area. And then as we get up here, uh, just notice we've got, um, got them on the move. This is going to be flashbang. Uh, let's see, headed to Hagerstown. Oh, Hagerstown's actually, that's going to be the bunker. What date is that? February 4th. So day after tomorrow, looks like he's headed back to Camp David. All right. So just a data point for you. And then uh, here it looks like he's headed to Philly, and then he's headed up to Delaware uh, for tonight, really, and then uh, back out of here. So interesting. So it's only for the third, and um, I guess he's got to go check his check his uh, 
uh, his classified data, make sure it's all still there. And then let's see, this one's actually going to be flashbang as well. That's on the fourth. So this dude's kind of on the move headed up here. looks to Syracuse, I think is what that is. Uh, so yeah. And that's, we know it is flashbang because of the size of the TFR around. And remember he takes a long time to get uh, one. You have to, uh, tell him the threat. And, uh, at which point he has to think about it for a few minutes and then recognize, Oh, there is a threat. Uh, and then you got to get him and his jammies uh, a moving, right? So they got to have a bigger bubble. That's why they have such a large TFR box or circle over him. Okay. All right. And this, I think, is just a mill op stuff going on. Let me just double check it. Security. Yeah, it's, that's all right. All right. Let's minimize what we got here. Let's get on with the news. Uh, here's one for you. Just uh, your Bohica moments. This just will blow you away, but I got more news that'll blow you away too. This this is the first one. MQ-9 Reapers offered to Ukraine for, yes, you're reading that correctly. That's a $1 US, but the relevancy remains a question. So uh, yeah, pretty attractive price. Uh, again, like I said, remember, this has got the prop job on the back. So it's got a lot of hang time um, and uh, not the same high altitude, although it does have a, a pretty large degree of intelligence equipment on it, but it's nothing like the Q4 drone, which is uh, jet powered, stealthy, and higher. Now this one is a little stealthy, but uh, when you start hanging armament off of it like this, it, it becomes unstealthy uh, or less stealthy. Okay, so uh, but yeah, this is what it what it looks like. So if you were to try to put that into the Ukraine arena, it wouldn't work, really work well, especially uh, as we'll we'll show you here in just a minute. You look at the NOTAMs. Uh, it gets shot down in a New York second because Russia is controlling the airspace over Ukraine. All right. So anything enters that, uh, that's basically going to get popped. All right. Okay. Now this one, let this sink in for a minute, folks. Joe Biden has offered Vladimir Putin, <laughs> my tongue tied today, 20% of Ukraine to end the war. Now think about that. This, this is going to, I'm going to give you the first piece of this sentence or, or this paragraph that is going to put it all together for you, the White House and the CIA, all right? Why is that important? Well, for first, first off, that would be the equivalent of somebody else offering up a certain percentage of the United States that doesn't really reside here or have that authority. So you've got Flashbang here offering up a country that he doesn't own, uh, but maybe we do own it. Uh, the only reason you could even get away with this is because uh, we have a stronghold in the Ukraine. I've been saying this forever and a day. Our CIA has had a stronghold in Ukraine since the late 1940s. So uh, that's why in the first paragraph you have the White House and the CIA getting involved and in offering up pieces of Ukraine. That tells you right there who is in control of all of this and why we have such uh, or so much skin in the game in Ukraine, folks. Yeah. Um, you know, they talk about how corrupt Ukraine is, that they're so corrupt that they uh, NATO would not even allow them to get into NATO because of their corruption level. But the reality is, I think the United States is probably more corrupt than, than Ukraine is. Uh, we're laundering money through there. We've got all kinds of <laughs> stuff going on in that area that is definitely suspect. All right. All right, let's break away from this nonsense and get over to the other nonsense. This is going to be your immigrant machine. These are Swift Air uh, aircraft flying across the United States. Notice the deportation aspects coming out of the border towns headed down south into Central America, into Cuba. Um, and, uh, and then, but then notice these that are coming from places like, um, uh, where is that? Is that T Topeka or Tupelo? I, uh, maybe it's. I have to go look at the board here. Uh, Ontario uh, headed to Greensboro. All right. So uh, that's that's into the country. Then you got one. The reason you have the green dot here is because you have aircraft actually flying up into uh, that is uh, Wisconsin. So let's look at the board here just for a quick second at the names that we have going across. This one's Phoenix to Jacksonville. OK, headed into Florida. And let's see. Oh, if I got any Milwaukee down to that one's actually headed down to Porter, uh, Puerto Vallarta. 
and Laredo to San Diego, Ontario to Piedmont, Miami. Oh, uh, yeah, tu- Tupelo Regional to Oklahoma City. Now, that's probably a prison run, if I had to guess, uh, headed to Oklahoma City. But, um, yeah, quite a few flights. It's uh, very active for a Friday. And, again, there are flights to the interior of our country. Uh, now, keep in mind, these guys do also represent some of the hockey teams, but I've yet to track any of their flights actually associated with a hockey team. So, all right, over to the NOTAMs. See what we have going on here. Now, these are interesting. These are boxes. This one is actually tied to uh, the Winter Storm Ops Plan. So uh, you've got uh, like the teal uh, hurricane hunters and things flying out here. Let's see um, if this dissipates as it starts to come into the West Coast. And maybe maybe they're uh, going to uh, to drop some stuff that would dry it up a little bit. Maybe because uh, that'd be your NOAA uh, aircraft, which we know uh, they are you know known to do things like that. And then we've got this one. This is uh, looks to be a launch box. Uh, we typically see those longer uh, boxes when we're doing some rocket testing. Notice it's headed towards Hawaii, uh, which probably make you feel a little uncomfortable if you're in Hawaii. But usually these long boxes are associated with some type of missile test stuff. Got some NOTAM activity up here. Uh, tucked in that little corner right there is HARP. Uh, doesn't look like this is HARP involved. This is military stuff north and west of HARP. Uh, this, all this yellow stuff you see, this runny egg looking thing, that's turbulence. And uh, the darker the the uh, boxes, the heavier the turbulence. So, so if you're flying off the East Coast today, it's going to be a bumpy ride, basically. Okay, let me turn off the turbulence layers, uh, kind of clean up our screen a little bit, uh, and let's get over here to this side. Still got the big box over Iceland, a lot of stuff going up here over Sweden. Uh, but remember, I said that Russia controls the airspace over the Ukraine. Uh, this is basically a big no-fly zone. Um, Nothing is going in there. If you were to look at the commercial aviation flights, they are all flying around this area. Okay, nobody's going in the in the box. Notice, too, when you see our R-135s that come out, they only come into this area right here because if they breach this or this, they will get shot down. Uh, right here, this is Crimea. This is Russia on the southern end of Ukraine. Um, and this is the area that um, uh, has... Uh, the S-400, S-300 missile uh, defense systems, which basically lock onto aircraft and take them out of the sky. That's what happened. Uh, you may remember, uh, I think it was MH-17 that, that was taken out uh, over the Ukraine, uh, out here on the border side, I think it was. Um, they basically locked onto a commercial aircraft and popped it out of the sky by accident, so they say. So, that, uh, that takes us into Ukraine. Let's take a look at the Ukraine map just to see what the latest and greatest is. Now, the blue disc that you see, um, think of those as uh, skeets. <laughs> I guess it's the only way you could really uh, put it out there. But those are uh, missiles or, and or artillery getting launched by Russia into the interior of Ukraine. Uh, it was like that the last time we saw it. Looks like Russia is stepping up their campaign uh, and we've got further evidence of that uh, that we'll look at here in just a minute, okay? But uh, that's going to be Ukraine. That'll just give you kind of an eyes on what's really going on here within the country. All of the red stuff, that is just an active war zone. Um, most of that is going to be uh, Russia, okay? Uh, matter of fact, everything we're seeing on the screen here is Russia activity, okay? All right, back over here to our board, and let's uh, start moving through. Now, this is going to be your cyber attack. Look at the number of cyber attacks today. Very important. Normally, we see it around 19 to 25,000, or sorry, million, 19 to 25 million this time of day. Today, 62 million plus attacks, and it's we're only halfway through the day. So we've got a significant cyber, uh, cyber attack uh, going on around the world a lot of the stuff's coming out of the U.S., uh, as you can see, bouncing into China from, from the United States, uh, down in Miami, hitting uh, down there into Spain. Uh, yeah, so very, very active. That's about 3x what we normally see, all right? So I imagine when we get over to this side, uh, we're going to see some other volleys. Now, these are different types of attacks. One map shows certain stuff. This one shows um, basically uh, all kinds of different things. If we look at the legend, 
the red are attacks, the orange are infections, and the white are spam. So spam is um, it's peppered pretty good across the United States. Just notice everything seems to be coming our way. Um, yeah, if you haven't figured this part out yet, I will tell you, uh, people don't really like the United States. We are, we're pretty hated around the world. Uh, and if you've ever traveled abroad, you kind of figure that out pretty quickly, uh, that we are not well liked. So, okay. Now here's one for you. Belarus says they are now autonomous, uh, in the control of Russian, uh, Iskander missiles. And, uh, this, uh, and I probably just butchered that, but you know what? I, I'm on the fly here, folks. Um, I don't work on my Russian pronunciations of things. Um, and so when I get into that region, it gets ugly. Um, it's almost like the, uh, the, the Joe Biden uh, gibberish at that point. But, you know, you guys are tracking, right? So anyway, uh, this is basically just saying, hey, we're in lockstep with Russia when it comes to the nuclear uh, uh, mobile guided missile systems. And so um, Russia has put those into Belarus. Uh, they probably got them in um, Kaliningrad. That's why we see them looking so closely at those two areas. And it probably violates the new SALT treaty, if I had to guess. Okay. All right. Now, here, this is why we're seeing uh, the map look the way the map looks. Uh, Russia is clearly on the offensive. They're actually stepping up their campaign. It says, uh, Ukraine says now that Rus Russia is actually mustering up a half a million troops on their borders uh, for a new major offensive. Now, we reported a few weeks ago that they were actually in the process of drafting another half a million, and it looks like uh, they're taking these half a million. They're already putting them in play as they get ready to uh, overrun uh, the eastern side of Ukraine. Um, it looks like they're stepping it up. So uh, I don't see them accepting anything from Joe Biden, especially uh, when it comes to Ukraine. More than likely, uh, Russia is going to be all or nothing when it comes to that country. Uh, just knowing that the U.S. and the CIA have a major stronghold, and that's on the border of Russia. Okay, so... All right. Now, we talk about Syria uh, briefly. We've been saying that uh, the Middle East is heating up uh, like a junkie spoon, as I always say. But uh, this is the latest report. It looks like 10 uh, have been reportedly killed after an airstrike on a convoy of Iranian-backed groups. And, uh, and no one has claimed responsibility for the attack, although I do believe the U.S. carried out the strike uh, in the latest news that I'm reading. So, yeah, we continue to be pretty active in the area. Uh, and so does ISIS, Iran, uh, Russia, Syria, of course, it's their country, uh, and then Turkey. So this is kind of becoming a very uh, hotbed uh, of activity between multiple nations and countries, uh, which is uh, going to make it very interesting. But keep in mind that there is an alliance between Russia, Turkey, and Iran. Uh, and when it comes to Gog Magog, Ezekiel 38, this will come into play. Uh, and probably not the too far distant future. All right. All right. Let's get over to Biggs Army Airfield, see what's going on. We've had some heavy movers going on lately. Um, and, and so that is a, that is an indicator that they're starting to move some of these tanks, some of this heavy equipment, uh, munitions, whatever it may be into, um, into the, the region. So they're probably going mostly, uh, into Ramstein, uh, I haven't seen a lot going into Poland, so most of it's probably getting um, parked at Ramstein and then then sent out to various locations around uh, the the EU, so to speak. So if we look at the arrival board, you got a Sun Country coming in from here, um, uh, Minneapolis. We've got another one coming in from there. These are smaller aircraft. Uh, then you've got an Atlas Air. Uh, that one is actually coming in from Baltimore, Washington. That's not one of the big wide bodies. And then an Omni Air coming in from Seattle, Tacoma. That is probably coming in empty uh, from taking troops out uh, to um, uh, Asia, the Asian Pacific. Then this one looks like Omni's headed over to Baltimore, Washington. It's on the board and uh, hasn't taken off yet. Sun Country is, uh, again, where is that headed to? La Crosse, Wisconsin. So, eh. You never know. Um, there is a blend coming out of Biggs Army Airfield of both immigration because there is a massive immigrant uh, camp at Biggs Army Airfield, a big one, holds about 15,000 people. Um, so, um, And then there uh, is also you know, the movement of troops. They process them through that area. 
as well as Topeka, Kansas, which I didn't pull up today. It's been kind of empty lately. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at that on Monday, sit rep to see if there's any more activity there. But uh, notice that Atlas Air is headed to Baltimore, Washington. Uh, notice it doesn't say Camber, so it's probably empty headed to Baltimore, at which point it'll probably uh, load up some personnel. Uh, on the scheduled departure, you've got another one here. Uh, actually, that's inbound from Baltimore. Uh, it is headed back to Indianapolis. So, um, But again, it doesn't say Camber, so more than likely it, uh, it – I mean, it could have troops – um, possibly, and they're just not calling it Canberra because it's in the United States, not heading abroad, but uh, probably not likely. So, okay, so we looked at where these are headed. Let's get over to the next one. This is going to be Ramstein. Let's see if we've got any heavies. Ah, we've got an Atlas Air coming in, Dover Air Force Base 747 400. That's probably carrying uh, maybe tanks, um, could be striker units, could be anything. So uh, definitely moving some heavy, heavy equipment. That's a, a 747-400. It has the ability to pop that front nose up so they can load stuff in and out of it uh, easily. All right. And then you've got this one here, another Atlas Air. That same aircraft, it looks like, rolling outbound back to Baltimore, Washington. Okay. All right. Let's move on. As we get into what are we looking at here, Atlas Air. All right, important part of Atlas Air, just notice you've got this. This is, looks to be rolling into Ramstein. Um, and a couple things headed into uh, Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, but this one looks to be headed here, if I had to guess, at the altitude. All right, so it's headed across a big big area of land. Okay, we get over to the United States. Most of this stuff is going to be your regular things. All right, we're looking for dots really into Europe. And this is uh, Coletta Air, the other big 747 movers. Just notice they've got a lot of stuff going into um, the Middle East. All right. And again, 747. So they're bringing in uh, the big, big equipment stuff. Headed on over. Uh, this is going to be, who are we looking at? Omni Air. All right. So Omni, if we get into this, two flights inside the United States again, uh, these are the contractor stuff. This is going to be moving troops, but remember, they serve many masters, uh, so they could very well uh, be moving immigrants, too, from time to time. But uh, this one's uh, coming out of Alliance, Fort Worth, headed to Pope Army Airfield, and then Biggs over to Baltimore, Washington. Those are probably carrying troops, uh, probably part of a rotation um, as uh, troops come in and let them go home for a bit um, and then putting some new ones, fresh boots on the ground over abroad. All right, it's going to be your Brits, very, very active. Just notice you've got stuff headed uh, down here to the Middle East, Cyprus, Crete, uh, right there into Constanta, and, um, and then it looks like we've got some stuff moving. This looks to be headed up into kind of the Baltics, and yeah, and then back home. That one's coming inbound too. Uh, they've been active. Notice uh, this one that's down here in Algeria. Um. They've been pretty active in Africa lately. We've got a lot of stuff headed down here near Ethiopia uh, and up here near like Morocco, uh, et cetera, Tan uh, Tanzania, et cetera. All right. And then some activity down here headed into, looks like uh, the Philippines, I think. Maybe leaving the Philippines. All right. Okay, Anderson, this is going to be Guam. Just notice nothing on the arrival board and the departure board is very active. Mostly things catch your eye here are going to be the um, uh, Navy logistics birds at CNV. Uh, so they're moving. These are small aircraft, like 737s, uh, moving aircraft or moving some stuff around. Then notice, too, inbound, we've got one United Airlines coming in from Kadena Air Base. That's uh, Okinawa. Uh, it doesn't say Camber, uh, but that probably does have some troops on it. It's a little 737-800. And then from there, it's headed over to Guam. All right. Okay, now this, get over here, this is the Zaruskis. We actually caught them airborne today. Uh, this one is coming out of uh, Almighty, uh, Almighty, that uh, out here in this area, and then this one's coming out of um, uh, Sochi, all right? And it looks like they're headed into Moscow, but uh, two of them, uh, they're not, based on tail numbers, that's not Putin moving. But these are going to be... Uh, Dignitary type aircraft. They could also be moving troops, but uh, they're ma mainly like dignitary type aircraft. Okay. All right. Can't get through a show without dogs barking. 
All right, let's get over here. This is Atlas Air. This is just kind of a gee whiz thing as we close out. Uh, but check this flight out. Take a look. This one always gets you. This is a 747. Uh, it's got the little crown as it's coming in. This is Atlas Air. The reason I'm pointing this out, from time to time, we see pilots go up and do a little air art, right? Uh, because they know people are looking at it and watching. You may remember we watched um, uh, a solar drone down over Yuma, Arizona that was spelling stuff all the time. But it was moving at a snail's pace. This 747 is not moving at a snail's pace. And if I were on an etch and sketch, I couldn't do that. Uh, but you think about a 747 actually flew that flight pattern to create that tracker in the sky. Uh, that's pretty, pretty doggone impressive uh, from a pilot perspective to know how to do that and uh, make it all run clearly without being sloppy. So uh, kudos to the, uh, the Atlas Air Pilot flying that massive 747. Looks like they took delivery of it here in Cleveland. So. All right, listen, that is going to do it for today. I hope you guys got a little something out of this. Uh, again, keep looking up because it's not just Chinese balloons over your head. It is U.S. intelligence. And if you're in Europe, it's German intelligence uh, looking at everything that you do. So that's going to do it for today. You guys be safe out there. Stay frosty and keep that powder dry. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.